Hi there. I am Alexia from the Embroider Shop. If you want to embroider your own lace, you've come to the right place. I am going to show you how very simple and easy it is to embroider lace without any hassles. The most important aspect in embroidering continuous lace, is to know exactly where the next starting point will be. I am going to introduce a very simple method of multi-hooping by making use of a pre-stitched guideline block. For the lucky ones who have the luxury of an embroidery machine with the camera function, embroidering continuous lace, will be a song. Let's get started. First, measure the width of your hoop. This hoop, measures plus minus 10 inches wide. Add, 2 inches which will give you 12 inches. This will be the width of the fabric you are going to hoop. The lace patterns will be embroidered on tulle. You will also need a 12 inch wide piece of water soluble stabilizer, the same length as the tulle. The length of the tulle depends on how long you want the lace to be. Now, we have to determine and mark our first starting point. To do that, we need to draw the horizontal axis on the tool. Measure 6 inches from the bottom side and make a dot. Repeat the measurement to the right and connect the dots, using a straight edge. Extend the line to run right through to the end of the tool strip. To determine the vertical axis, measure from the center of the hoop to the left side of the hoop. For this hoop the measurement is approximately 7 inches. Add at least 1 inch. 8 inches from the center of the hoop to the left side of the fabric will provide enough fabric outside the frame to hoop the tool properly. Lay down the water soluble stabilizer and position the tool on top. Pin the two layers together. Hoop the fabric. Make sure that the cross on the fabric aligns with the cross on the hoop. Apply KK2000 sparingly to secure a piece of solvi to serve as a topping. Engage the hoop to the machine. Run the machine, to stitch the first guideline block. Run the machine to start embroidering the design for the first block. The first block has been completed. You may now unhook the workpiece. Tear away the solvy topping. You are now ready to find the next starting point. Measure the distance from the left vertical line of the first guideline block to the first vertical center line that runs through your first starting point. This is exactly 3 inches. Now you measure 3 inches from the right side of the guideline block and draw a vertical line through this point. Where this line cuts the horizontal line will be your new starting point for the next block.
Since you now has a new starting point you can once again hoop the fabric. Make sure that the cross on the fabric aligns with the cross on the hoop. Before you engage the hoop to the machine, roll up the loose end of the fabric and pin it to make it easy to handle. Engage the hoop to the embroidery machine. Don't forget to secure a piece of salvi to serve as a topping. It is important to use the edit function of your machine to make sure that your needle is aligned with the bottom line of the previous guideline block. Run the machine to stitch the second guideline block. Run the machine to start embroidering the design for the second block. When your lace is long enough disengage the hoop from the machine and unhook the lace. Remove the guideline stitches with a blunt needle. Tear the topping away. Turn the lace over and trim away the excess water soluble stabilizer. Submerge the lace in water to dissolve the water-soluble stabilizer. Hang the lace to dry and iron with a mild steam iron. Trim away the tool along the contours of the lace. Measure a 3 quarter inch from the tiny shoots of the flower and make a mark. You will need to make two marks. Use a straight edge to connect the dots. Cut on the line. If you want to join the lace at two ends, cross cut along the contours of the lace design. Fold the lace to form a circle. Position the end that has been cut out on the other end so that the pattern contours integrate with each other. Pin to hold the lace in position. Apply some basting stitches with a hand needle and thread.
stitch along the basting stitches to secure the joint. Only the basting stitch is left to be removed. Well done. You can do a lot with this lovely piece of heirloom lace. Don't you think? And here are the basting stitches being removed. Do not forget to trim away the excess tool at the back along the joint. You can visit our website at www.embroidershop.com for more lace patterns. Take note that this video is a general instruction video which applies to all lace patterns. Every design comes with its own step-by-step -step photo illustrated instructions in a PDF file. Thank you for watching.